So there was a, a boy named Chet. He was about 14 years old from Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, Chet loved to play baseball. And he was good. He was a very good ball player and on a team. And uh, he also uh, was very active in his church and a pretty serious kid. He uh, learned his lessons. His parents were both uh, Sunday school teachers at the local Lutheran church there. And um, he, uh, he really took to this uh, statement that Jesus would make, let your yes be yes and your no be no, which means the truth. There is an objective truth to everything in life. The trick is to find it and to stay there. And so he really kind of took that to heart and in a very powerful way. And one of the things that he struggled with was his baseball coach would sometimes uh, teach the kids how to, let's say, cut corners playing the game of baseball or to give themselves a, an advantage. And, and one of the things that the coach taught was that if a ball, if the pitcher is pitching way inside, uh, you have a couple of options. If it's early into the count, you could just let it go and take the ball, or you could gently lean in and get hit. But you got to be careful because if the umpire catches that it's intentional, you'll be out of there. Or if it's coming in close, you could elect to fake getting hit. And if, you, if it works, you take the base. Well, anyway, Chet uh, found himself trying to deal with this situation one day. It was the seventh inning. That's the end of a game for that age, seven innings. It's the bottom of the seventh. Uh, his team is down by a run. There's two outs. Chet's up to bat. The ball comes in very close and he fakes getting hit, the umpire awards him the base. So Chet, as he's trotting down to first base and everybody's cheering and everybody's excited and all this good stuff, he has this sinking feeling that maybe he is drifting from that true north a little bit. And anyway, as he's standing there at first and taking his lead, the next batter swings and the ball's hit to uh, shallow right field for a single. Chet takes off uh, and he rounds second base and he's now going for third and his coaches are saying, don't do that, Let's hold up. He didn't hold up. He slid into third and was called out. He went from uh, hero to goat within a minute or so. Uh, um, the coaches were upset, the parents, not so much the, student, uh, the players, but he was ridiculed a little. His mom pulled him aside. She was a baseball mom. She was a Sunday school teacher, but she was a baseball mom too. She had two other boys. He was the youngest that went through baseball. And, uh, and so she pulls Chet aside. And Chet's kind of down in the mouth a little bit. And she told him, she said, you know what, Chet? I know what you were going through. And I know what you did. And frankly, I'm proud of you. That was a tough thing to do, to go for it, knowing what was probably going to happen. And it's hard sometimes in this world to do the right thing when the world says the wrong thing is the right thing to do. It's tricky. It's hard to make sense of these things. And then she told Chet a story about the meaning of the cross. And surprise upon surprise, the lesson that she was working with was today's lesson from 1 Corinthians that uh, was read by Chris earlier. And she said to Chet, she says, you know, there was this church in Corinth and Corinth, and it was a big church, it was a successful church. It was a church that was comprised of 
mostly what they would call Gentiles, people who were not Jewish, who came into the faith. So these were non-Jewish people that come into the faith. And they believed in Jesus, they believed in his ministry. However, the church had some conflicts about how much one really needed to follow Jesus. She said, she said, you know, there were a lot of rich people in this church, as there were in others, but there were a lot of rich people who certainly made sure that the, the poor members had enough food and all this other thing, but they were also, they really still liked showing off. They liked showing off with the finest clothes and they wanted to sit in a place of honor. They wanted to be honored for who they were and the money that they had. And that created a real problem. And when understanding the cross of Christ and what that really means, um, you could almost say that they saw the cross as a bit of foolishness. They had no particular interest, it would seem, in picking up their cross and following Jesus, although, you know, these things are tricky. But she said Jesus and his cross represent the truth and the hope that all people of God are loved and that all people should be treated with dignity. Um, she said to Chad, she said, well, I'll tell you what, today you demonstrate that the cross is wisdom and that all should be free. You stayed on true north, the objective truth, which is the cross, it's absolute truth. What Jesus taught was absolute truth. He did not deviate and he never, ever compromised the truth. Well, does it really apply to something as simple as a game of baseball? Or was she, are we splitting hairs here a little bit? I guess the way things work is that little dishonesties, uh, when properly executed, can build bridges to larger ones. It all has to start somewhere. What is the gateway? We talk about gateway drugs. What is the gateway on truth that allows one to carry on and go in a whole different direction? Now, I gotta be honest with you, there have been times in my life uh, where I've caved into dishonesty in favor of some sort of gain. I have certainly done it. And as I think about it, I was too afraid to do anything else, even though I knew it was wrong. There was just so much pressure to conform that I had to somehow push the truth down and bury it in my stomach and keep it down until it dissolves. And the lie became the new truth. So is the, is the cross foolishness or wisdom? Is it a get out of jail free card or a mulligan? Or is it a new way of life. There's choices. The truth will set you free. John 8, 32. It is the peace that surpasses all understanding, and that peace will guard your hearts and minds, says Paul to the Philippians. It is in all ways the objective truth. It's always there. It's a matter to find it. It's always there. Or are we in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves? Is it either or, or the other? If we're honest, maybe a little bit of both. 
You see, when we struggle with these matters, it's akin to fighting the good fight of faith, yes? I think so. Not just worshiping Jesus, but following Jesus. And when we follow Jesus, it's at that point, and only that point, that the, the cross becomes wisdom. Chet and his mom were on to something, I think. And the good news is, so are we. Amen.